fact, we uh, start the call of the board tonight, as Kerry said, uh, with the uh, Tasmanian seats. Uh, we lead off uh, with the, uh, the seat of Bass. Well, this is the seat Michelle Byrne won by 78 votes in 1998, increased the majority in 2001. But she's been unable to hold off um, for the reaction to the forestry policy, one presumes. 4.9% swing to the Liberal Party. And Michael Ferguson, a former Meander Valley councillor, is the new member for, for Bass. And the next seat of Braddon, Mark Baker, is uh, at this stage, yes, he's the new member for, uh, for Braddon, defeating Sid Sidebottom, who uh, has held the seat for the last two terms. She is, um, uh, he is a local businessman from Devonport and he has won this electorate with a swing of 7.7%. So that looks like another one of those seats which has been determined by the forestry policy one presumes. Denison is the safest of the Labor seats in Tasmania and remains that way. Only a 1.5% swing against Duncan Kerr. He's got 50% of the primary vote and uh, gets 627 after the distribution of preferences. The next electorate of Franklin is held by Harry Quick for the Labor Party, 46.8. He will hold on to the seat. He suffered a swing of 0.9% against him. But uh, the two southern seats are the ones ex not expected to be affected by the forestry decision. And the final Tasmanian seat is Lyons, which is held by Dick Adams. Who's, uh, he suffered a 4.9% swing. That was another one of the seats which is more likely to be affected by the forestry industry. But he had a much bigger buffer in Lyons. He was also much more anti the logging decision. And so Dick Adams has held on to the seat there. We'll go to the uh, Victorian seats now and start with the seat of uh, Aston. Well, Chris Pearce won this narrowly at a by-election in 2001, which was the turning point for John Howard during the, the run-up to the 2001 election. Well, he's now got a margin of something over 13%. He's had a 7% swing to him. It's a very, very comfortable victory for the Liberal Party's Chris Pearce. And we look at the uh, seat of Ballarat. This is a seat Labor gained at the last election. Catherine King, it was the only seat Labor actually gained at the last election. She's been re-elected. Catherine King returned as the member for Ballarat. Look at uh, Batman now. This is Martin Ferguson's seat. There was some talk the Greens might run second. They, in fact, finished third. Martin Ferguson's had a 4% swing against him, but he's a, still a seat he holds by well over 20%. So Martin Ferguson's back in the Parliament. And to Bendigo. Bendigo, the Battle of the Gibbons. Kevin Gibbons, the Liberal, leads on the primary votes, but Steve Gibbons, the sitting Labor member, goes on to win after the distribution of preferences from the Greens. He's, he's had a swing against him of about 2.5%, but Steve Gibbons is returned as the member for Bendigo. And seat of Bruce. Alan Griffin's also suffered a swing against him, a swing at 2.8%. Alan Griffin has been returned, though, as a member for Bruce. And uh, we get a call now. Maria Van Vakenu, I think the correct pronunciation is. She suffered quite a substantial swing, 7.6%, actually a halving of her majority. She's won with 59% of the vote. That's up in the uh, Sunbury, Craigieburn, north east, northwest sector of Melbourne. And she's been returned, but that's a substantial swing in that seat, 7.6%. Uh, and to Casey. Tony Smith, a man who uh, used to work for Peter Costello, and some people can't help but notice the physical similarity to his former boss. He's increased his major majority by 4.3%, now holds it with a margin of something like 12%. Mm. And Chisholm? Anna Burks, well, she had a couple, bit of a swing against her earlier, but in, in the end she has held it without any difficulty. Anna, Bur Anna Burke returned mm. as the member for Chisholm. And then Karangamite. And there was talk of Labor winning this a couple of months ago. Stuart MacArthur up against Peter McMullen, a man once dubbed Melbourne's richest Maoist when he was a young student radical. He hasn't been able to dislodge the sea change voting Karangamite, and Stuart MacArthur, who's held the seat for 20 years, is returned with the same majority as before. Let's have a look at Carayo. Gavin O'Connor's been returned. He suffered a small swing of about 2.5%, but Gavin O'Connor had no difficulty being returned. OK, and Deacon? Phil Baresi, he's increased his majority by 3.8%. He's got a margin of over 5%. Now it's probably the first time he's ever got away without going to preferences. The biggest buffer since he won the seat in, I think, 1996. Dunkley? I think he won it in... You know, I'm not sure when he won it now. <laughs> Dunkley. It's a long night. Bruce Bilson comfortably returned, an increase in his majority of 4.1%. Bruce Bilson now has a margin of 9% in the Frankston-based seat of Dunkley. Mm. And Flinders? Well, this is interesting because of the Labour candidate, Simon Napthine, who's the brother of the former Liberal opposition leader in Victoria, Dennis Napthine. In fact, a year ago, Simon was handing out Liberal Party how to vote cards for his brother, and now he's a Labor candidate. He's had no impact. There's a swing to the Liberals, and Greg Hunt is uh, returned with a margin of about 11% in Flinders. And uh, let's go to Jellybrand. Uh, well, there's some interesting in this about how the Greens would go, because Nicola Roxon had a lot of um, reaction to her decision to back, to back the ban on gay marriage, mm. and there's a swing of about 5% against Labor in what's normally a pretty safe seat. 
uh, it's a bit hard to determine where that's gone, but certainly the Green vote's up a bit in that electorate. Mm. And uh, Gippsland, uh, the National Party seat? Oh, no difficulty in the end for Peter McGoran. He's got a 5.7% swing to him. He's got his margin up to the 8.3% it was before he had his margin slashed by the redistribution. So Peter McGoran back in Parliament. And uh, Goldstein, which of course brings uh, Andrew Robb into the new Parliament. Yes, David Kemp retired. Um, not much of a swing in this electorate. Andrew Robb very comfortably returned as uh, comfortably elected. And uh, it interesting to see how he and Malcolm Turnbull both in there. Senior talents looking for ministries, one suspects. And to Gorton now. Brendan O'Connor has been returned. He's currently the member for Burke. Gorton's a substantially redrawn seat named after the former Prime Minister. It's created for this election. A 5.5% swing, but uh, Brendan O'Connor certainly returned. It's a safer seat than his old electorate of Burke. Mm. And Higgins? Peter Costello. Now, there's 11% there with the Greens. Uh, oh, not much of a change at all. Peter Costello has been returned with roughly the same vote. Aston now has a margin substantially bigger than Peter Costello in Higgins. Mm. So that shows some of the changes in margins over the last eight, nine years of the Howard government. Mm. And to Holt? You say uh, Tony Bur Anthony Byrne, who's been re-elected there, he's had a 6.6% swing against him. Actually, this seat is quite marginal. Yeah, that was a substantial swing. That's at the bottom end of the scores with freeway. It'd be interesting to know if that's the issue there. OK, and to Indy. Uh, Hotham first. She's oh, I beg your pardon. Simon Crean seat. Let's not forget Simon. <laughs> Uh, he's had a 3.6% swing against him, is comfortably returned as a member for Hotham. And now to Indy. This is Sophie Panopoulos, who was, uh, won the seat at the last election. She's increased her majority. She holds his Wodonga, North East Victoria based seat very comfortably. And to Isaacs. And Corcoran won this at a by election a couple of years ago. Uh, she's had a 5% swing against him. It's now quite marginal, but she, she has held the seat. Jager Jager. 0.8% uh, swing against Jenny Macklin. And, um, She's comfortably returned. There's some, I've, I haven't looked at some of these Victorian seats tonight because they were quite safe Labour seats. They're quite big swings against Labour in the southeast of the city. Mm. It'll be very interesting to find out what's gone wrong there mm. for Labour. So Labor. it is uh, across the board, isn't it? And uh, Kuyong? The seat of Menzies and Peacock. Um, there's a swing of 1.4% to Labour. There's that doctor's wise factor again. Obviously not that big in the overall outcome. Petra Giorgio still holds the seat quite comfortably with a margin of 10%. But like neighbouring Higgins, Kuyong and Higgins, Heartland seats for the Liberal Party now have a smaller margin than Aston, which was once a marginal seat. Mm. Latrobe. Uh, this was a seat there was a lot of interest in whether Jason Wood would succeed Bruce Charles, uh, Bob Charles, a former member who was retiring. Susan Davies, the Labour candidate there, used to be an independent and was responsible for bringing down Jeff Kennett in 1999. Mm. The Labour Party vote has not done at all well there, and uh, Jason mm. Wood is the new member for Latrobe. Mm. Lawler. Julia Gillard's seat suffered a 4% swing. Uh, she still holds it with a margin of over 8%. Julia Gillard is re-elected. Mm -hmm. And to the Mallee now. John Forrest, he's increased his margin still further. He's now got a 25% buffer in this election. He's very safe National Party territory in the north-west of the state up towards Mildura. Maribyrnong. Bob Sercombe has been returned. Another inner city seat with a 5.7% swing. So. Uh, there'll be, I think there'll be some real questions about why Labor's done so badly in Victoria, because that was not at all suggested before this election. It certainly wasn't. McEwen? McEwen, um, Fran Bailey's been returned. She had a 3.5% swing to her. She'll be very glad to see a 6% margin, because normally mm. poor old Fran's been defending margins of under 3%, so she can breathe a little more comfortably. She's um, been a minister recently. She was appointed, um, I think it's Employment Services. I can't quite remember. It was not long before the election. And to Macmillan? Well, Christian Zara has been defeated. He needed a swing to him of 3%, roughly. He's had a swing against him of roughly 2%. Russell Broadbent returns to Parliament for the third time. He's lost after one term, the two previous occasions. I'm sure he's hoping for a longer parliamentary career this time. Mm. And to the seat of Melbourne, uh, Lindsay Tanners. Well, I was interested to see how the Greens would go here. The Greens have finished third in the end. Um, certainly, they have not got quite the boost people expected. And Lindsay Tanner doesn't even need to go to preferences because he's got 54% of the vote. What was the Green vote there last time? And it wasn't around about 15 to 18 percent? Uh, no, it was, up, it was about 15. The, uh, the, uh, we've actually got a bad preference count here. Lindsay Tanner's got a substantially bigger margin than the Electoral Commission is. They're counted between Labour and the Greens. Even if the Greens had finished second, Lindsay Tanner had a margin of over 10 percent against right. them. Melbourne Ports. Ah, I didn't get a chance to look at this tonight. Uh, David Southwick leads on the primary votes, but you'll see there's a 14% green vote there. And in the end, there's almost no, a less than 1% swing against Michael Danby. And uh, the battle of the two Jewish candidates resulted in Michael Danby being returned. He will be returned on green preferences. Mm. And to uh, Menzies? 
Minister for in, uh, Workplace Relations, Kevin Andrews, easily returned 2% swing to him in his very safe Liberal seat. And the uh, Murray? Charmin Stone, a very safe seat. She's got a margin of something like 24%, a very comfortable victory for her. Mm. Scullin? Harry Jenkins, he's had a 6% swing against him. Some quite big swings in outer Melbourne at this election. Clearly John Howard has finally started to sort it of become popular in Melbourne. Can't all be the scores be freeway. I can't, they can't all be, I think there's obviously... A few other factors there. There's a, there'll be quite a few bit of dissection of the Victorian results. Wannan is the uh, next seat. David Hawke has been very easily returned, no difficulty in the seat that was once held for several decades by Malcolm Fraser. Mm, and a famous last seat in Victoria, Wills, once held by former Prime Minister Bob Hawke. Uh, yes, and uh, Kelvin Thompson's had no difficulty being returned in the inner city seat. OK. Let's uh, go to the uh, New South Wales seats now and we'll look at uh, Banks first off. Well, in the end, Daryl Mellon's had yet another swing against him. He's down to 1.2%. So. Uh, He's 3% ahead, but he's, uh, after the distribution of preferences, the call to Australia did quite well in that electorate by the look of it. And uh, it looks like a swing of 1.7%. Darrell Mellon's been returned, but uh, that's not a particularly good result. Mm. And to Barton? Uh, Robert McClellan, the shadow spokesman on Homeland Security, has had his majority increase. The Liberals only announced the candidate at the very last minute, and there's very, very little report of them campaigning much in that electorate. And the Prime Minister's seat of Benelong? One of the biggest swings to Labor in the election has occurred in Benelong, 3.4%. But as I pointed out to people, there were 40 safer seats in Benelong and Labor, uh, John Howard was never going to lose this seat if his government was re-elected. Mm. His government's re-elected, he may have had a swing, he's back in Parliament. To Barawa. Philip Ruddock has also had a swing against him, 3.7%. He did have quite a swing to him last time, but Philip Ruddock's been returned as a member of four Barawa. Mm. And Blacksland. Uh, Michael Hatton returned in Paul Keating's old seat, no particular difficulty for him there. And Bradfield? It's so Brendan Nelson's seat, he's had a swing against him as well, 2.3%. So there's a bit of a swing on the North Shore of Sydney, but nothing like anything that would uh, damage the Liberals' hold on any of these seats. And, uh, I mean, you can't imagine any Conservative Party ever living in Bradfield. And to Calair, held by independent uh, Peter Andrew. They did once lose the state seat in that area when their candidate forgot to nominate, so it can happen with mistakes. Peter Andrew has no difficulty, 50% of the vote, so he's back comfortably returned. The Liberals have outpolled the Nationals, which is a worry for them in that seat. OK, and to the seat of Charlton. Kelly Hoare succeeded her father, uh, Bob Brown, a number of years ago. She's increased the margin slightly in this uh, uh, Hunter Valley seat. Chifley. Roger Price, he's had a swing against him of 2.3%, but he still holds this western suburb seat quite comfortably. And Cook. Bruce Baird has been returned. Uh, no particular swing in that electorate, but Bruce Baird's had a little difficulty being returned. Mm. Cowper. Let's get this right. Luke, Luke Hartsucker um, won this seat at the last election. Without a Liberal candidate, he's increased his primary vote to 50%, and he's had a slight swing, 1% to him. He holds it with a margin of about 6% now, but it's a good victory for Luke Hartsucker. And to Cunningham, of course, um, which uh, Michael Organ picked up for the Greens and the by-election. Um, Sharon Berg will win this seat simply because it's highly doubtful that the Greens can get ahead of the Liberals at this stage of the count. So at this stage, you would say that Sharon Bird, after losing the by-election to Michael Organ, should be able to win this seat. Although we will have to wait for preferences to be counted because they were counted the wrong way tonight. Mm. And to Deville? Well, early on, Labor did do well in this seat, but then over, as the nights progressed, there's been a 5% swing to the Liberals. And uh, Ken Tyshurst, a former lightning chaser, has proved that lightning can strike twice because he's returned for a second term. And uh, Eden Monero. Gary Nairn. Gary Nairn returned. He's had an increase in his vote of about half a percent. No one who's ever held Eden Monero ever has much of a majority. And Gary Nairn will have to continue with the hard work if he wants to hold that seat. And once again, it returns the same seat, same party as one government. And Farrah. Susan Lee won this at the last election off the National Party. Without a National Party candidate, she's had no difficulty getting elected this time. Is it right? This used to be Tim Fisher's seat, didn't it? It was Tim Fisher's yeah. old seat and it was lost. And lost to the Nationals. Mm. Uh, and to, sorry, to Fowler? Fowler. This is about the safest Labour seat in the, uh, in the state. It's based around Cabramatta and Julia Irwin has been easily returned in that seat. OK. Gilmore? Joanna Gash has had a swing against the 5%, one of the biggest swings in the country, but she had an enormous swing last time caused by the problems with the Labor candidate last time. So Joanna Gash, is, the seat's a bit more marginal than it was, but it's still a comfortable majority. Mm, and Green, though. When Anthony Albanese, talk of him losing to the Greens, but he's got over 50% of the primary vote. In fact, the Greens ran third, so Anthony Albanese easily re-elected in Green. Mind Lowe. you, that Green, the Greens have got their, what, 20% of the vote? Yes, yeah. but they didn't run second, mm. and that was the one they were more likely to run second. And Greenway? Not to, uh, Dreadful result for Labor. It's safe lib gain by the look of it. 
Labor's about 1% behind, we estimate. Um, there's been a 4% swing, and Louise Marcus will be the new member for Greenway. First time it's been held by the Liberal Party in its history. Guider, held by uh, John Anderson, National Party leader. He's increased his majority by 4%. John Anderson comfortably back in Parliament. And Hughes. Darna Vale's lost, uh, had a, a swing to her about 1%. Darna Vale comfortably re returned in that electorate. And Hume? Albie Schultz has increased his majority by 5%. Albie Schultz back in Hume. And Hunter? Joel's Fitzgibbon has increased his majority by 3%, so that's one of the better results. There was a very bad swing against Labor in the Hunter at the last election, and it does appear some of these Hunter Valley-based seats have come back to the Liberal Party. To the Labor Party, I'm sorry. And Kingsford Smith? Peter Garrett brings power to the passion. I think he's the new member for Kingsford Smith, replacing um, Peter Ga um, Laurie Brewer. Of course, not as much power as if he'd actually won the seat and if he'd um, Labour had won government, but uh, he's back. OK, let's have a look at Lindsay. Lindsay's Jackie Kelly's been returned. It's one of the seats with a swing to Labour, one and a half percent increase, her margin is now four percent, but Jackie Kelly has defeated David Bradbury for the second time. Bit of a different trend here than Victoria, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, quite interesting. Uh, to Lowe? Certainly the big swing to the Liberals was last election. Uh, Lowe, there's not much swing at all. John Murphy's been comfortably returned in that seat. Mm. And Line? Mark Vale's won this seat. He's uh, had an increase in his margin of two percent. Um, he's had to spend a lot of time overseas with the free trade agreement, but for his sake, uh, for, he'll be gratified to see that he hasn't actually hurt his majority in his seat. Mm. And to MacArthur? Pat Farmer's increased his majority to 10%. He's got 50, just under 55% of the primary vote, and Pat Farmer has now turned this seat into quite a safe seat. Mm. McKellar? Bronwyn Bishop has had a slight swing against her. Um, big vote there for the Labour Party, or for the Greens. An independent, he was a former mayor of Pitwater, but Bronwyn Bishop's comfortably returned. Uh, interesting to see whether she continues with the rumours of her being the speaker. Hmm, Macquarie. Kerry Bartlett um, is re retained his uh, hold on this seat. This is a seat that Labour only ever wins in landslides. Um, Kerry Bartlett's defeated the wonderful name pa Mark Ptolemy from the Labour Party. Hmm. Mitchell. This is uh, about the safest Liberal seat in the country nowadays. Uh, margin's about 20%. Alan Cadman has been returned. Uh, New England. Tony Windsor easily returned 57.8% of the primary vote. He's very easily elected. Mm. Newcastle. Sharon Grit. Uh, yes, Sharon Grierson's increased the majority by 3%. She had a big swing against the last time, but she comfortably holds on to the Labour seat in Newcastle. Mm. And North Sydney, held by Cheryl Hockey. Well, some of the stories about the uh, Greens winning this seat have been proved to be entirely wrong. Joe Hockey's got 56% of the primary vote, 2.6% swing, swing against him after preferences, but he's easily held the seat. Mm. Page? A uh, slight swing to the, to the National Party, but Ian Causley, he has no difficulty. He's back in Parliament with 54% of the vote mm. after preferences. And to Parks? A uh, big swing to the Nationals, and they now hold this seat quite comfortably. Uh, John Cobb returned for a second term in Parliament. Parramatta. Now, this is a seat we have the Labor Party ahead. Ross Cameron is ahead on the primaries, but the distribution of preferences and factoring in the postal and absent votes from last time has him 0.4 of a percent behind at the end of the night. Um, he's actually, on the primary votes, he's... Um, Labor's ahead by 794 votes. But if you factor in the postals and absence from last time, that's a really close result. That's in doubt. OK, Patterson. Patterson was the Labor, seat Labor really needed to win, but they've gone substantially backwards. Um, a friend of mine in Newcastle says there's been nothing but ads for Bob Baldwin for the last four weeks in Newcastle. And it's obviously paid off as he's increased his margin for 5%. This seat has never re-elected an MP, so Bob Baldwin has bro broken a traditional trend in that seat. <laughs> and Prospect? Janice Crozier has retired. The new sitting member for Prospect is Chris Bowen, who's won a comfortable victory, though he has suffered a 6% swing against him. OK, and to Reid? Laurie Ferguson has been returned, a 4.5% swing. Um, so Laurie Ferguson has been returned. Yeah, it's not a particularly good result by the look of it. OK, and uh, Richmond, we heard from Larry Anthony before. No, he's, um, he's having a real struggle. There's a 2.1% swing to the Liberals, to Labor, sorry. If Labor comes from behind and wins that, that's an extraordinary outcome. But at this stage, Labor is definitely ahead when you factor in the posters and absence from last time. I think that's quite validly in doubt, I would say. I wouldn't call that a gain. That's a real interesting one. Mm. So even though the Nationals' vote has been up overall, um, they could be down a seat. They could be, yeah, could be. Yeah. Riverina. If one of those won't be Kay Hull in Riverina. Um,
She's had some interesting things to say on education in this campaign. She had some strong things to say about Telstra, and given the Senate outcome, um, she might have to uh, think about some of those things. But, um, yeah, Nationals easily hold River Arena. OK, Robertson? Uh, Jim Lloyd easily returned. Uh, no change on the last result. He's got a margin of 7% still. Minister of Roads, Local Government and Territories. Shortland? Labor's increased its majority slightly. Jill Hall has been returned as the member for Shortland. And the seat of Sydney? Uh, the Greens have finished, in, finished third in this electorate. This is a seat they had a chance of winning. They had to get into second spot and they won't. And Tanya Plibersek, she's gone to preferences, but she will still win the seat. And uh, now to the seat of Throsby. Jenny George easily returned in one of the safest Labour seats in the country. Warringah, held by Health Minister Tony Abbott. Tony Abbott's got nearly 55% of the primary vote and Tony Abbott has been returned as the, mem as the member for Warringah. Mm. And Watson. Uh, Tony Burke is the new member of Watson. He's transferred from the New South Wales Legislative Council. He's given up an eight-year term and a life pension to enter federal parliament with the new parliamentary scheme, which isn't nearly as generous. So he's uh, given up a lot of money to become a federal MP. Mm. And the, the Wentworth story uh, with new member, Malcolm Mal Turnbull? Malcolm Turnbull's had a 2.5% swing against him, but Peter King couldn't get into the second spot. And as a result, Malcolm Turnbull will win after preferences. Mm. And let's look at um, Mark Latham's seat in Warrawa. Mark Latham's got over 50% of the primary vote and wins with a slight swing to him. Mm. Well, they're the, uh, the New South Wales seats. We'll go to Queensland now and uh, lead off with the seat of Blair. Uh, gee, there was some talk that Labor would do well here in the tollway issue. And so the Ipswich motorway issue was a 5% swing to the Liberals. Cameron Thompson's taking his margin into double figures. And the Bonner? Well, we've got, um, in Bonner, we've got um, Con Shaka behind at the end of the night. Con Shaka is in difficulty and could well be um, losing that seat. He's on 50.4%. He's certainly behind on the primaries, and we've got him really struggling to get ahead. But it will depend on how his postal campaign has gone. All right, Bowman? Bowman is a vacant seat at the moment with Con Shaka moving seat. So Andrew, I think it's Andrew Lamming or Laming. I'm sorry if I've got the pronunciation wrong there. But all he, I'm sure all he wants to hear from me that he's a member of parliament. He's an ophthalmologist from the Red, Redland Shire, <laughs> former international rower, and he's a new member for Bowman. And uh, Brisbane. Uh... Arch Bevis has been returned with a 3% swing to him. So Arch Bevis is back in parliament, well, defeating that... Ingrid Tall. Mm. Now, again, that's quite interesting because that was a seat that Labor was most worried about tonight. Mm. Yeah, I mean... I, I still never thought the Liberals would win it in a city seat like that. Mm, but he's got a swing to him. OK, Capricornia? Uh, Kirsten Livermore has won this seat in the end. She's suffered a tiny swing against her, but in the end she's, uh, she's won quite comfortably from the National Party's John Lever and Liberal candidate. Mm. Dawson? Deanne Kelly's comfortably returned. Um, she got a 3% swing to her. Margaret Menzel was a sugar seat candidate. She got 7% of the vote. She's uh, heavily involved in some sugar... Um, organisation, but she's the wife of a former state MP, um, Max Menzel, okay. um, and had no real impact in the end. And let's look at Dixon, where uh, Peter Dutton's uh, comfortably returned. Another one of those seats that had a hoodoo, and Peter Dutton is the first member for Dixon ever to be re defeated. We've seen every member previously in the seat defeated, but Peter Dutton has been returned over Craig McConnell, a local councillor. Fatten. David Joel holds his very safe uh, Northern Gold Coast seat quite comfortably. Mm. Fairfax. Ah, oh, let's see. Ivan Malloy has increased the Labor primary vote despite all the controversy. <laughs> uh, it's a slight two percent swing after preferences, but um, Ivan Malloy has got a two percent higher vote than whoever that, was the Labor. Now that has to be the result that. of the night. <laughs> uh, obviously, his wife is very popular. <laughs> uh, let's look at uh, Fisher. Uh, Peter Slipper, he's increased his majority as well. This is one of the safer seats in that part of Queensland, and Peter Slipper's return to Ford. A six percent swing, and Kay Elson, who. Uh, well, she just makes this seat safer and safer. This is real outer suburban mortgage belt seat. Andrew I'll... Griffith, held by uh, Labor's uh, Kevin Rudd. Kevin Rudd's increased his majority and nearly didn't need preferences. He'll be quite happy to see that result at least. And Kevin Rudd has been returned. Mm. Groom. Ian McFarlane had a li little difficulty holding this very safe Toowoomba basin seat. Mm. Herbert. Peter Lindsay's increased his majority. Instead of 1.5%, he's got a margin of nearly 7 so Peter Lindsay's easily returned. Mm. Hinkler? Uh, Paul Neville, I think, won by 64 votes last time. He was helped by redistribution. He's increased his majority up to 4.5%, so Paul Neville's back in Parliament. Mm. Andrew Kennedy? Bob Catter's, Bob Catter's won this seat. Uh, whoever finishes third will help elect Bob Catter. He hasn't done as well as the other two independents, uh, but he certainly had no difficulty holding the seat. His vote's down slightly. And to the other vast North Queensland seat, Leichhardt? 
So much for talk of Warren Inch being in trouble. It's a swing of three and a half percent to him, and he holds it by near margin and only 10 percent now. Lily held by Wayne Swan. Uh, Wayne's increased his majority slightly. He's got just under 50 percent of the primary vote, and uh, Wayne Swan's got no difficulty being returned. And uh, further up the uh, Sunshine Coast, Longman. Mal Bruff's held this marginal seat for uh, since 96, and he's increased his majority with a 5.5% to him. Doesn't even need preferences. He's got more primary vote this time than he got in two-party preferred last time. Maranoa. Bruce Scott easily re-elected re in this seat, which is, I think, two and a half times the size of Victoria. Mm. McPherson. Margaret May returned in this very safe Gold Coast-based seat. Mm. Moncrief. Another very safe Gold Coast-based seat. And uh, I think it's Stephen Chobo. Sorry, I think that's, that's the pronunciation. He's um, won that seat with a margin, 20% now. Very mm. safe seat. Now, one we thought uh, might be a Liberal loss uh, tonight, Morton. Much smaller swing in than in some other seats. Only 1% to the Liberals. But Gary Hardgrave will be happy to uh, get his margin up to 3.6% again. Mm. Oxley. Bernie Ripoll had no difficulty being returned. He's the uh, return as a member for, Rip, uh, for Oxley. His margin up 1.4%. Mm. Petrie. Theresa Gambaro's had a 4% swing to her. She's comfortably re-elected, doesn't even need to go to preferences. Mm. Rankin. Uh, there were some strange early figures that had Craig Emerson losing this seat. In fact, there was no swing against him in the end. He uh, did go to preferences. There was an independent with 6.7%, but he's still got a margin of 2.4%. Mm. Let's look at Ryan. Uh, no particular swing here. Michael Johnson returned with a margin of 10%. OK, and the final one in Queensland, Wide Bay. Oh, I, I never got to see this. Lars Hedberg, the independent, who stood with support from people like Bob Gatti, got 12.5%, but Warren Truss's primary vote was up compared to last time, and he's won easily on preferences. OK. I think we go to the uh, ACT... No, no, sorry, we go to the South Australian no, seats. No, we're going uh, to ACT first. We go to ACT first? OK, we'll go to the uh, seat first of Canberra. The two seats here, Canberra first. Annette Ellis um, comfortably holds his seat. No particular change in the vote. 50.6% uh, of the primary vote and easily 10% after preferences. And uh, Fraser? Yeah, we never got to see Bob's seat, but he'll be gratified to see his margin up to 13% again and Bob McMullen easily elected. OK, and the uh, Northern Territory seats, two there, Lingiari? Uh, Warren Snowden's increased his majority by 2.5% and Warren Snowden's returned. And in the other seat, Solomon, which is based on Darwin, Dave Tolan has also increased his majority by 2.5%, so instead of an 88-seat majority, he holds it with a margin of 2.4%. And we should note that Dave Tolner has a dog with the unique name of Brussels Sprouts. Yes. OK. Very Having noted that, we now move on to the South Australian seats. We start with the seat of Adelaide. Uh, Trish Worth is in trouble. She's in a worse position than she was at the last federal election, which means she's got to do even better on postal absence than she did last time. That looks like Kate Ellis might have won that seat. So Trish Worth... Um, the Labor primary vote is up quite substantially in that seat, so that's a bit of a problem for Trish Worth. Mm. Barker? Uh, well, the National Party had some hopes in the seat, but they finished third. Uh, the candidate they wanted to run ended up taking a seat in the Wren government in South Australia, and Patrick Secker has been easily returned in this very safe seat. Mm. Boothby? Andrew Southcott, there were some strange swings early on. In fact, there was a 2.5% swing to Labor, so there has been a swing to Labor in some seats, but Andrew mm. Southcott will still win this seat. Mm. Gray? Barry Wakeland's increased his majority by 3%. This is a very safe lab, um, coalition seat now. Um, it's getting much safer. Hindmarsh. We have Labor ahead in this seat as well at the end of the night. It's a 1.4% swing for Labor on the booths in that electorate. And um, while Labor is behind on the primaries, at this stage we have them getting home on preferences. And uh, Steve Dujan has said there'll still be a lot of counting in that seat. So some of these seats under 1% at the end of the night, I think we really will have to wait on these postals and absence. The, uh, Turn out there is a bit down on last time, so there's a lot of postals. OK, Kingston? Labor's just pulled ahead at the end of the night, a 1% swing. Dave Cox uh, is behind. We have him pulling ahead and winning marginally. If he's done his work as a sitting member, then he should do well on the postals in absence, and therefore he would win the seat. But that is definitely in doubt. It's only 50.2%. Mm. And uh, Macon? <coughs> Had to cough there for a moment. Macon... Um, there has been a substantial swing to Labor, nearly 3%, but Trish Draper increased the majority substantially last time, and that buffer has assisted to her to get home by just a margin of 0.8%, so it's a bit of a tight contest there. Mm. Seat held by the uh, Foreign Minister, Alexander Downer, in Mayo. Well, in the end, Brian Deegan finished third, um, so he may, after preferences, get into second spot. That's irrelevant, because Alexander Downer's got 53% of the primary votes, and uh, 
will comfortably hold this seat. OK, Port Adelaide. Rod Sawford's had a swing against him in this safe seat, but it's a very safe seat. He has little difficulty winning it. Sturt. 1.6% uh, swing to Labor. So Labor's got a swing to it in... Uh, there's some very strange results in South Australia, very strange results. Um, Christopher Pine has held this seat, but he has had a swing against him. Mm. Wakefield. Uh, speaking of strange results, 2.6% swing, and Labor has... Labor has lost the seat based on um, Elizabeth and Manapara in Northern Adelaide. And so David Fawcett, a former test pilot, will be the new Liberal member for Wakefield. Mm, lost by Martin Evans there. And uh, to the West Australian seats now. We start with the seat of Brand. Uh, Kim Beasley's had his margin um, halved in this election, but he still will win comfortably. Um, no problems there for Kim Beasley. Mm, Canning. Don Randall's increased his majority by 9%. Kay Haller, who was drafted in the last minute, never really had a chance, and Don Randall has no difficulty to turn this into quite a safe seat. Mm. Cowan? Of course, Don Randall lost the, after one term last time he was in Parliament, so he's got two terms this time. Cowan, ah, Graham Edwards is in trouble. He's got 50.2 after preferences at the end of the night, which surprises me from those primary votes. Um, so, a few problems there, but that's, that's in doubt. I would expect in a seat with a sitting Labor member that he should be able to coast home on posters and absence, but again, a substantial 5% swing there. Curtin? Julie Bishop has been easily returned with 59% of the vote. No problems with Julie Bishop. Forrest? Jeff Pross is back as well with an increase of 3%, so uh, no difficulties for him. Fremantle? Uh, Carmen Lawrence's primary vote has taken a bit of a hit to the Greens, but uh, she still holds seat comfortable with a margin of 7.5%. Hasluck. Labor looks to have lost this seat, a 3.6% swing. Sharon Jackson defeated. Stuart Henry is the new Liberal member for Hasluck. Mm, Kalgoorlie. Barry Hass has been returned with a small swing to him. Um, again, Labor was disadvantaged there by the death of their candidate. Again to the seat of Moore. Mal Washer easily returned in this northern Perth seat. O'Connor. Ah, Wilson. 53% for him. There was some interest how the Nationals would do, but in the end they finished third. So Wilson Tucky continues to hold this very safe, safe uh, wheat belt seat. Piers? Judy Moylan, uh, very easily returned. No difficulties for her. Mm, Perth? Stephen Smith's seat. He's had a 4.5% swing against him. He's increased his majority election mm. after election, but mm. this time he's taken a hit, and, uh, but he's still back in Parliament. Oh, he spent most of the election, of course, out of the election, following Mark Latham around. Mm, that's a, unusual for him in that seat. Sterling? Uh, Sterling, Michael Keenan is the new member for Sterling, defeating Jan McFarlane. Um, there's no way Labor can come back and win that seat. Three, a 4% swing. Can Swan? Uh, in doubt, Labor's just behind. Now, Kim Wilkie could win. That one's in doubt. No way he can pick the winner on that one. Labor can win from behind on preferences. At this stage, they're slightly behind. It'll depend how the posters and absence go. And our final seat, where's Tangney? It was farewell to Daryl Williams and hello to Dennis Jensen, who's a CSIRO scientist, defence scientist, um, and he's the new member for Tangney. And that's all 150 seats. Thanks, Anthony. OK, uh, we're at that part of the night. It's just about over. We'll just do one final wrap to give you again an overview of what's happened around Australia. Uh, the government returned for its fourth term. Historic victory for John Howard. Uh, it would appear a, a, an increased majority by at least two seats, as many as nine, although that's, that's very much at the far end. An increased majority for the government, an increase, as I said earlier, in the safety margin for those, uh, those marginal Liberal seats, that much harder for Labor to front up again next time and win. We might just take a look at our scoreboard graphic for one final overview, where you see that in terms of the primary vote, uh, the coalition have ended up with just over 46 per cent of the vote. Labor crept up over 38 per cent, uh, but not a good result for Labor. They always needed to be around the 40 per cent, slightly higher to have any real chance tonight. The Greens have ended up with a flat 7 per cent, slightly up, but perhaps not as good in the end as people might have thought they were going to do. The Democrats' vote pretty much decimated in this election. Uh, we might uh, also, Anthony, just finally look at the chamber graphic and the final computer prediction for the night of how the Parliament will finish up. Well, we're still at this stage predicting through Liberal 75, Nationals 12, that's a total of 87, 60 for Labor, no Greens, and three others, which is a coalition majority of 24, which is an increase from the current Parliament.
OK, uh, more on that, of course, will be known in the days ahead. Huge uh, postal vote increase in this campaign. In some seats, we may not know for a week or more. There's also the Senate, of course, where there's every prospect that the government might end up with control of the Senate, either directly or indirectly, which has big, big connotations for what lies ahead over the next three years. Things like the sale of Telstra, a lot of it, other legislation that's been stuck in the past, industrial relations reform, and so on. That's where we leave it tonight. In fact, uh, it's becoming noisier by the